Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. So I found out that Troy Sivan has a stunning house in Melbourne, which is where I live. And uh, you guys said I had to check it out because it's on the Architectural Digest and it was posted like two weeks ago and we have to review it and see what it looks like. And this is gonna be crazy because when I look up amazing houses, usually they're in all different kinds of places in the world. But when it's local to you and you realize it's that close to home, it just, it always seems like it's more insane. So let's check it out. Oh, hey AD, what's up? Please come inside, make yourselves at home. Okay, can I just say from the get-go, I really love exposed bricks. I love historic aged bricks or historic. I don't know if we even have enough history in Melbourne to call it historic, but exposed bricks. Oh, I love them so much. I have been waiting for this day for my entire life, so. Same, same. <gasps> I don't know if we should go back and look at that lounge room, but what I am seeing right now, I like what I see. Okay, we'll, we'll let it keep going. <gasps> oh no, it's super nice. How good would it be to be like, I'm sick of being in America. I'm just gonna buy myself the sickest pad in my home city or in my home country. One thing that I really also love about houses is not only exposed bricks, but I love industrial aesthetics and I also love high ceilings. So this is pretty much ticking all of my boxes and I love how it has a bit of like a, I'm thinking the word hippie, but it's not hippie. Urban, no. Bohemian vibe? I just love it. I love how the furnishing is a mix of like, it looks like there's kind of retro chairs in the background over here. I love the big artwork. I love the fact that there's a big tree in here. I mean, whoever did the interior design of this place has some really, really nice taste. And it's also really nice seeing some brick flooring as well. And I'm also loving these orange velvet chairs. They are really nice. And I love a mezzanine level. And I even just love simple straight black balustrades as well. This is meant to be my house, I swear. I swear we have the same taste. Also, can we just admire this crotch sip? Very nice. I feel like they, oh, people are gonna get mad at me for not taking off my shoes. <laughs> I, I am the type of person who does not believe in having shoes on a couch unless they're slippers or, or Ugg boots. I'm just like, it's the quickest way to wear down your couch. So thank you, Troy. I appreciate that. I also love that this uh, coffee table is wood. And I gotta be honest, every time in house tours, you see the typical like Chanel book. Yves Saint Laurent Dior book. And it's kind of cool to see some other art books here. I mean, nothing against you guys if those are the books you have. I have a few of them as well, but it's kind of nice to see something different. They advertise it as the most comfortable couch in the world and it's accurate. It's by this company really? called Maker and Son. Falling asleep here, a good-, a good... <gasps> Maker and Son. Wait. Yeah, I know these people. I mean, I don't know them personally, but um, Yes, I have seen these couches and, you know, I wouldn't call them cheap, but he isn't going and buying like an 80 grand sofa either. Are there $80,000 sofas? There probably are. What are these made of? Are they linen? Good for you, Troy. Good for you going for ergonomics and appearances. This coffee table we Love are made. It. It's just a really, really huge log, basically. Oh. I hope they didn't cut down just specifically for me. I should have done some, some research. I love that. He is also ethically responsible. It's crossed his mind and he thinks, I really hope that that tree was used for other purposes. But that, it is a gorgeous coffee table. Oh, well that's a little bit of fun, isn't it? <gasps> that's so much fun. I love that. I, okay. I just love this guy's taste. I think the goal was to have like a soup of light. You know what I mean? I didn't want like, hard overhead lighting, because mm -hmm. no one looks good in that. I feel like they kind of look like alien skin or something. They sort of feel like what I imagine alien skin would feel like. Actually, that is true. They kind of remind me of uh, fish in the abyss who have like that weird like alien skin that's kind of transparent, so that's true. One weird thing I have is just like a personal thing. I don't like lights like this. People love them, just not for me, because I have like a, a dust thing. 
Lighting is apparently a massive part of interior design, and I didn't really know this until maybe a few years ago that there are also lighting designers, which of course it probably seems like common sense to you guys, but for me it was like light bulb moment and lighting really does matter a lot. So it's lovely to see that he has the awareness of soft lighting, that it makes him feel more at home and more cozy and therefore he'll appreciate his space so much more in the way it's lit. So a lot of respect for that. This lounge room is just so nice. I think they've done such a great job. Damn, I do love that coffee table. This couch is vintage by Percival Lefer. There's like this white bathtub oh, situation. That's, yeah. I do always have it's a fun. cut up apple tree. Are those pears? Maybe they're Nashies, which is like a crossover between both. Yeah. My auntie actually loves to get full lemon tree branches and put them in a vase on her dining table. And she is so great with floristry arrangements and she just sticks a branch in the vase and it looks like a masterpiece. So I really do quite like uh, apples, pears, Nashies, whatever, lemons on tree branches. I think it looks very nice. And it kind of looks like you have a whole tree in your house as opposed to more of like a, a really perfected floral arrangement. I feel like branches can look a lot more like natural and organic. Fun. And it's Is that a plunger? super, super comfortable. Is that a super sized toilet plunger? <laughs> I sit here a lot, have my coffee. My nice. wish for everyone is that your space is like the place that you think of when you meditate by using lamps or candles or just like your favorite bed sheets. I, I want that for everyone because it's a really, really nice feeling to just have a place that's like yours and you know, you can just kind of kick back and relax and- So well said. That's true. I think that's a really beautiful thing, you know, wishing that everyone has a space, a home that feels like a space that they can meditate in like your place of comfort and ease. And I really hope to get there as well someday myself. I'm definitely not quite there yet, especially because we have really loud construction going on right there. <laughs> but I think that's really nice. I also want to point out the exposed plumbing, I think, or exposed gas pipes or something uh, behind him that look like they're in like a copper. I really like that kind of industrial element. And I also am loving these bifold doors. They look like they're made of steel and really, really sturdy and really nice, like factory quality doors, which I love as well. I also love the kind of natural stone pavement, the walls that have that gorgeous texture on them. It's, it's a very like sturdy looking home and very, it has a lot of character. And I know this is such a weird thing to point out, but I love seeing like PowerPoints and power sockets in people's homes in videos like this because I feel like in designer homes, in photo shoots, they must hide all of the power cords because nothing ever like goes to a wall socket or anything. Like everything looks so perfected. So it's kind of nice to see, oh, okay, nice houses also have power leads. Not everything's magically wireless. Ooh, fun. I'm going to say this a lot, but I think it's my favorite part of the house. It just feels really, really chill. We've got this like awesome green stone. Look at this mm. table thing. This is a servery and apparently it's food safe. So like you could eat your dinner off of it, but I, I use plates. <laughs> Good to know, and but that's cool. Like all the appliances <gasps> are integrated, which is sick. I'm not going to show you my fridge because it's mostly just like beer and old takeout food. <laughs> Love the honesty. I like that he's, uh, he's very natural. Like, he's not pretending to be super perfect. You know, when people open their fridges and they're like, this is my fridge and everything's perfectly aligned and you're like, I would feel so much anxiety taking anything out of that fridge. But yeah, this kitchen's very beautiful. I mean, the craftsmanship in this home's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. And you can see that Troy has very good taste and a good eye for craftsmanship, I think, which not everyone does. So noticing and appreciating those details, like those wooden blocks that have all been put together to make up the kitchen bench, like that's unique. Not many houses are gonna have that and a lot of thought and energy and time and probably money has gone into that. And the green stone's nice too. It's different, it's soft and I love integrated kitchens. I think having an integrated fridge is so nice and sleek. 
It's also nice seeing like that angular window kind of floor plan and also the window that opens up as like a bar window. Like he said, to be able to pass coffees outside to people, that's really nice and to just let all the fresh air in. The only thing I'm noticing that would frustrate me is there's no fly wire. And fly wire in Melbourne, well in Australia is quite important because flies just come in like crazy. So I don't know if they took it off for this shoot or if he just, it just doesn't bother him too much, but I definitely would need to have some kind of fly wire, I think. I love the way that it shows. Mm. I don't even know, these like sort of natural markings. Yes. And then just wood, heaps yes. and heaps and heaps oh, of wood. Because I love So wood. much So nature. we did a really, really big renovation on this house. The kitchen's all totally brand new, but we really? there used to be a toilet here. Wait, did he do the renovations? Whoever he has working for him to do these renovations and these ideas, have dang good taste. Let's go upstairs. Such a beautiful house. Oh, the little ghost by this artist named Nell. It's sand blown oh, glass. Cute. I just think it's so cute. Kind of reminds me of my dog back yes. in LA, which I unfortunately haven't seen oh. for like a couple months now. Feels like a little bit of Nash in my house, which is nice. Oh my God, that would be so hard leaving your dog in another country. Oh, the pain inside of doing that. I just couldn't imagine leaving my dog behind. But then again, I would really struggle putting my dog on a plane from America to Australia because I know that would be like traumatizing for him. So oh, it's nice that he has an artwork that reminds him of his dog though. So here we are on the landing. Interesting ceiling. This is one of my favorite places in the house to come and look. It's kind of lofty mm. and reminds me of some places that I've been to in like Williamsburg, working at my desk, just heaps and heaps of books. Not oh, there's a deal. A lot of people know this about me, but I am very, very gay. And so just in case people don't know that, I litter gay homoerotic books <laughs> all around the house. Good Sorry. for you. I just wanted to look at these clown faces quickly. Are they clown faces? They kind of look like when you go to a fair and there's the clowns that go. Which is cool. I mean, they kind of look like they're in pain and a little bit creepy, but I'm into artwork like that. I do also really like how much appreciation he has for creatives, for art, for photography, for architecture, for design, and obviously being a singer, songwriting, performing artist, then you kind of expect that. But his is at a very like wholesome, genuine level. I don't know, I just feel like he seems so genuine and so passionate. It just kind of radiates throughout his whole home. So this is the guest bedroom. Nice. So it looks like, I'm not gonna say where it is, but it looks like this is a typical, uh, just judging from this window, like a Victorian terrace home, double story terrace home, which you see a lot of in Melbourne, in Australia, also in Sydney. Uh, so there's a lot of these like older school windows and many of these terrace homes are often very narrow on narrow long blocks. So they're usually more elongated homes with not a whole lot of light and windows. And then a lot of them are renovated into these amazing hybrids of traditional, more historic homes combined with modern architecture. So that's definitely the style of this home, I think. And they've done such a great job with it. Australian birds just sound insane. So these cork ceilings were original to the house. It kind of makes the whole house feel kind of like a, a really cozy cave. And we just... I didn't actually know that was a feature of some homes that they had this, this ceiling. That's pretty cool. I also like how there's built-in shelving. That's good. And we did the walls in this like Venetian plaster. Sick. It's so smooth and soft. And so I That's feel like nice. everything just kind of like hugs you at night. It's very minimal. Except the bathrooms, like I so really nice. do mean it this Wow. And I like that instead of going for the the real gold fittings, you know how there's so many like real gold gold fittings around, it's more of that brass looking fitting. Like they almost look like over time they would fade into that more like dark greeny color, which personally I think would be really nice, but I think it just looks a little softer, a little bit more organic as well. And that stone is is seriously, seriously nice. Which is Oh, that's like, nice. That's in so much natural light. Sometimes I'll just come into this bathroom, even though it's not my bathroom, just to kind of like watch how the light changes throughout the day. Oh, it's really, really nice. Oh, you're so appreciative. This is my sister's room. Oh, it's nice. His sister's got a room there. This is also quite minimal as well. 
Uh, it's not like it's a big bougie bedroom with like a chandelier. It's, you know, it's very natural. There's some beautiful warm colors. Like this whole house just films warm and cozy. To be able to live with her, give her like a, a pretty room that she loves and that she can like make her own has been so, so, so nice. Oh, I love this guy so much. He's so sweet. Okay, get it together. My bedroom is upstairs and it's the only thing that's upstairs. And I love that like, I can just go up to my room and close the door. And it's like- Cool, oh, spiral staircase. Come upstairs and I'll show you my bedroom. Whoa. That's nice. It's like a really pretty day. Ooh. I don't know, I just feel like I'm outside. It's beautiful, you That's get a cool. breeze, you hear the birds. You could definitely see or imagine him writing music in that bedroom, don't you think? Like just opening up the windows, listening to the birds, watching the light. It probably makes some really nice light patterns on the walls, having those more slender uh, windows across the wall on the right hand side. And I think there's actually a marble trim around that doorway, which is quite unique into the bathroom. Good to see a split system. You definitely need aircon in Australia. I've got to say it. I bought a cushion that looks like that chair and that poof. And it was like white in that kind of fur look. And those are a nightmare to clean unless he probably has someone who can clean everything and keep it really, really nice. But just as a warning, if you see that and you're like, I want that, just be aware that they go really, really gross, really, really quickly. And they gather a lot of dust and smell, especially if you have a dog. <laughs> My closet used to be here. So there was a, a closet here. <laughs> we closed it off because I needed a bathtub. Mm -hmm. Wait, where does he put his clothes then? Whoa. This is, my bath. This is where I spend most of my time in this house. Sometimes I put like my laptop up here, watch Netflix. Yeah, it's really, really peaceful. There's just like music everywhere. And so I put on a nice- He has surround sound in his ensuite. I mean, look at him in the bathtub. He's living his best life for sure. And I love these. Well, they kind of look a little bit um, pinkish, like a little bit of a blush color scheme. It's like a clay blush color, which is nice because again, like the marble, the clay, the blush, it looks like contemporary nature. It's so nice. And I love the bathtub. I'm really obsessed with the fittings. So that's nice. There's a skylight above the bath, which is stunning. And I love this simple like pane of glass here. That's so nice. And then you've got this nice little towel rack. Interestingly, this tap isn't in the same color as these which I find just an interesting mismatch choice. <gasps> this is the best hand moisturizer ever. Their hand moisturizer, amazing. What is that? Why, I wonder how you control the temperature. Maybe it's just like one tap for hot or cold. Usually in Australia, you have like a hot tap and a cold tap or like one of those things that you adjust the temperature with, but that's cool. And actually this is really cool because I think this is a whole pane of glass that then goes to the bathtub. And what they've actually done here is really clever because they've extended the vanity basin space so the edge clips into the bathtub area, which is awesome because then that can act as storage for your other body washes and whatever. So that's a very clever design and I love how the glass is like cut perfectly to go with the slant of the room. I mean, that's a sign of having an unlimited budget to just renovate your house with. I'm also trying to make sense of where the shower is. Maybe, oh, maybe the shower is directly next to the bathtub in this little pocket here. It must be, and that must be the purpose of having the glass there. Right, cool. So this garden space is really nice. That table really doesn't look like it's weatherproof. I'm sure it is, but it doesn't look like the typical outdoor table design. It's really nice, and I love these chairs too. I love that they're mismatched. There's the other artwork he was talking about. And yeah, it looks like there's a lot of native trees as well. These are a kind of Banksia tree that we see a lot here, which is nice. Some kind of eucalyptus tree. I, I have a lot of respect for people who want to use native plants in their gardens because it's really good for the environment. I don't know how he lives without flywire though. Can someone tell me the secret to living without flywire? Because I don't know how it works. It's just like 
actual heaven to me. Again, you can see like the LA, California influence, but then we've also got like a lot of Japanese stuff. This is called the Swamp Cypress. Oh, so he's got Japanese stuff as well. Little fishies in here somewhere. Oh, oh, there's fishies in his flower pot? What? I didn't even know you could do that. So, okay, there are some other plants that aren't natives, but I appreciate some natives there. We love that. And also, um, you know, he's done a lot of traveling, so he probably wants some plants to remind himself of the places he's been. The fact they're in pots, like plant pots, also means that they're probably not going to affect or take over trees around them, which can be a problem of when you bring other plants from other places in. So, you know, they're kept within his garden. I'm talking about it like I know everything about plants. I really don't. What if we create this, like, fantasy outdoor toilet situation. Oh my God, he has an outhouse. That That is actually kind of iconic. And you know, they're not a bad idea. Yes, you might need to walk in the rain to get to it, but it's not very far. And the other thing is you have so much privacy. You don't have to worry about people hearing you. I think it's a great idea. You can be at one with nature whilst you do your business. Oh. I went to one oh. of those bathrooms where, you know when you go to a restaurant and people are like, oh, have you been to the toilet? You have to go to the toilet. Yes, so just kind of I love that. Just kind of lent into the fantasy and lent into like a little bit of surrealism. The walls are all <laughs> curved, so it's kind of like a cave. The Sonos is tucked away. Sometimes I make it feel like a rave in here, like if it's all quiet in the house or whatever, and you come in and it's like doo -doo 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 -doo, while you're peeing. I love a pee rave. That's great. It's a stunning room. I think the color is beautiful and uh, the curved walls are so nice. It also has that that interesting tap as well. And I don't know if that's a slanted basin or if it's like a, a regular basin, but I see the Aesop moisturizer as well. And even the detail having that little plant with the ox blood coloring in it to kind of tie it all in is really nice. Those lights are sick as well and as well as the mirror with the different prisms of color. But one thing I wonder, which I know I'm looking far into it and I know they probably have this sorted but I do wonder where the ventilation is mm. obsessed okay I just had to point out the bougie hose holder I mean who has a bougie hose holder who has a hose holder or hook that nice also I love this kind of farm barn looking door I wonder how old this garden is or if, or if they put it all in new because it looks like it's been there forever. In 1874, this was a handball court. You can see two handsome men playing handball <laughs> in a court. And then there's this like weird sort of spear thing on the side. Uh. And then if you walk over here. No way. That. It's the same buddy, spear. I'm only 25 and this house is like 146 years old. So imagine being 25 and having that house. That is a lot to get your head around. That is harder to get my head around than the fact that the place is over 100 years old. And that spear is really, really awesome too. And the fact that Troy or whoever did the research on this home has looked into the home and noticed that history and noticed that that spear is there, that in itself is really cool and very respectful. It's really nice to respect and know the history of the house that you live in. And the handball court is pretty sick as well. I assume those, well, yeah, those walls would have been there because the the spear's there, unless someone put the spear on there at a later date to kind of mirror what it used to look like. Um, but I imagine that's why those walls are so beautifully aged. He seems like a very nice, nice boy. Thanks again for coming, AD. I hope you Thanks for having us, Troy. Well, this might be one of my favorite houses I've looked at. I don't know if it's because it is in Melbourne and everything I see in it, I know is not that far from me and I can kind of recognize and be like, oh, yeah, that feels like home because it is where I live as well. But I love this house. It's probably the house that might be closest to my own personal taste. And I think the interview was really well done as well. So let me know in the comments down below what you think and let me know if you'd like us to check out any other celebrity homes or any other homes on the market. And I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Oh, that was a hair on my hand. Oh my gosh. I just realized I'm covered in Bowser hair.